Ah, uh, this foolish camera is acting up again. Um, I want to first, before I get into my little spiel, is I want to clarify not this last video, but the video before, as well as the past video. So it would be the first one and the second. In the first one, I was speaking about our common ground, and it's about how uh, there is some difference of opinion as to whether military and naval protection should go as far as Cape Horn. Third, access to our great industrial plant by Great Britain within the limits of the neutrality law that is unlimited right of purchase by Great Britain of planes, tanks, munitions of war, raw materials from private manufacturers, provided she can pay for them and provide her own transportation. And this, I may add, is a very great aid. Now, this part is where there was a skip in the video. Without this aid now being given, England could not long carry on the war for her supplies of raw materials, her steel-making capacity, munitions, and plane plants are insufficient for a long major war. Without the production facilities of the United States, she would be crushed. That's from the first video that was a blooper. And for the second one, it was sentimentalist or realist section. A nation cannot be a knight errant. Further on down in the paragraph, I said from the underestimate of the military and economic strength of Germany. It has gone to the opposite extreme of overestimating that strength. From some of the remarks heard on the eastern seaboard in June, we would have thought that New York and Boston were in imminent danger of being bombed. I don't know why, but instead of Boston, I said Russia, so I'm correcting that. Now, I'm going on to the next section of General Wood's speech to the National <laughs> Council of Foreign Relations. And... As he stated before he even started making the address, he knew that everybody there was totally against anything he had to say because they were looking at making massive amounts of money from war. And uh, if you really look at it, people, we're still under the debt from World War One as well as World War Two, And I would not doubt that the War of 1812 is still in there and that we're paying interest on that because they never print up the money to pay the interest on the debt. They'll print us the debt at a 10% interest. They'll, they'll print us the money for 10% interest. But they will not print the same equivalent amount of funds at that interest to pay off the debt. That's why we're perpetually in debt. That's why Congress, under the Constitution, which the Constitution is suspended, your Bill of Rights is suspended, all the amendments are suspended. Why? We're under a national emergency. We've been under one type of national emergency or another since 1945. See, this National Emergency Act was penned in 1933. Roosevelt put it into power. Undoubtedly, we've been under the National Emergency Act since 1945 because executive orders are against the Constitution. Only Congress has the authority to declare war, not the President. So the President for all these years has been going around the uh, Congress, the House of Representatives, as well as the Judicial Branch. And this is the reason why, because the National Emergency Act and all the other acts that have been passed since then to further strengthen that. And if you don't believe what I'm talking about, go to my Ning site. It's in there about me column. Copy and paste the document to your computer. Please, I beg of you to do so. That way, when you hit the control key and click on a highlighted link it'll take you to the section that will tell you what it is that I'm talking about it's in the Senate's only re it's in the Senate's own report as well as numerous law library law libraries that I've been to I have no reason to put out any falsehood 
because I am not motivated by anything other than seeing that maybe one day the Republic might be restored. When I'll be dust, I, I, I live on the sufferance of the government. So, if it wasn't for the government, I'd be dead. Because as a true republic, that means everybody has to be a sovereign person. And to be a sovereign person, you have to take responsibility for every aspect of your life. Not only your actions, but what you allow the actions of others to impact you. And in how they impact you. Do you understand? You set boundaries. You set boundaries in government, business, personal relationships. Hell, you even set boundaries with your pets. This is what I'm talking about, folks. I'm not in a position. The only thing I've got left is part of a mind and my mouth. Hell, I can't. This hand right here, if I, if I type one key wrong, there goes my wrist. It's out of commission for over two weeks. And it feels like a nail being driven through my wrist. It's not nice. But I grin and bear it. All right. So here, here we're going on. This is a continuation of General Wood's speech before the Council on Foreign Relations. And it was on Friday, October the 4th, 1940. Can England be inv invaded? As for an invasion... At the great risk of being called a false prophet, I doubt whether any invasion will ever be made. And if it is attempted, it will be decisively repulsed. To land 250,000 Germans in England with mechanized equipment, ammunition, and necessary supplies would be a gigantic operation. Once landed, that force would have to face 1.5 million Englishmen under arms fighting on their own island behind strong defenses. And to land those 250,000 German means practically complete mastery of the air, blocking off the English fleet, complete control of the channel, none of which objectives have yet been attained after more than a month of intensive effort. To sum up, I doubt whether the island can be conquered, and I am quite sure the British fleet cannot be put out of commission. Now we come to our own danger of invasion and perfectly fantastic hysteria that pervaded this country after the Battle of France. Quote, I think any competent military or naval expert, certainly the vast majority, will tell you that there is absolutely no danger of an invasion of the United States, even if Germany is at, uh, completely victorious. And I doubt whether she will be. The amount of shipping required for the transportation of even 250,000 men of a more modern mechanized army, with their ammunition and supplies, over three 3,000 miles of force would not be idle. Well, the technologies have changed a little bit because now we've got uh, mega aircrafts. Look at the new Airbus. See, what is it, C-130? Uh, but we've got the uh, Hercules, uh, the C-130s and above. And as long as we have the fuel and the oil to lubricate the bearings, Yes, bearings. Those are very important, people. You don't know. Bearings, the little tiny things, they play a great part. Without it, everything would just stop. So, you got to understand. you got to start thinking like a military person to understand this stuff and, and to understand the uh, where America needs to be. It needs to be able to defend itself from anybody, anywhere, at any time. And if a republic can do that, it has a right to live. If a republic or a democracy or a country, whatever the, you want to call it, if it does not have the strength to survive on its own, then it has no right to live. If you cannot, because that's the nature of